In this video, we're going to look at gradient descent, which is a general way for finding the minimum of some function with respect to the function variables. It's often used in machine learning in cases where you can't get an analytic solution for the optimal parameter settings by, for example, just taking the partial derivatives of the loss with respect to the parameters and setting that equal to zero. Gradient descent you can use even when you can't get that type of analytic solution um, as long as you can write down or calculate the gradient of the function in some way. We're going to look at the fundamentals of gradient descent and also look at some of the problems with this approach and things to look out for. Here we have some function j which is a function of some variables w which in general can maybe be a vector of variables. And we want to minimize this function j with respect to these variables w. And you can see that I'm already using the notation from machine learning. So j could be your loss function, for example, that you want to minimize with respect to your parameter vector w. The idea in gradient descent is to start with a random w, some random guess of your parameters or your variables, and then basically keep updating w in order to reduce the value of uh, the function. So let's just look at an example in one dimension. So here we've got our function um, j as a function of this single variable w. And what we want to do is we want to figure out the value of w at this minimum. So what we did before was basically take the derivatives of the loss with respect to w and set that equal to zero in order to find this minimum because at this point the gradient would be zero. But in some cases it's not possible to find a closed form solution or analytic solution for this minimum value. Gradient descent works in the following way. We're going to start with an initial guess for w. And then we're going to update that guess for w. And how we're going to update it is we're going to set it to its current value minus eta multiplied with the derivative of the function with respect to the variable w in this case. So let's say we guess w at this point here. Now, if you're going to calculate the gradient of the function at that point, it might lie something like that. And that means that this value here, we've got a negative gradient here. So we've got some negative value here. So we've got negative and a negative that gives us a positive number. So we're going to update this W by moving in some positive direction. In other words, we're going to move this way. So let's say this is our new W now. Then what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this step. We're going to take the derivative of the function with respect to w. And in this case, we're still going to have a negative gradient. So we're going to move in the, the positive w direction. We're going to move that way. And again, you're going to repeat this step here. We're going to take the derivative and so on. So you're going to move this way and so on until you hopefully get to the minimum value of the function. And if this is a machine learning model, then hopefully that setting for your single parameter w is a good setting. Just some terminology here, this eta variable here, which determines how big a step you're going to take, and that is called the learning rate. So let's just stay with the one dimensional case and then see what type of problems we might run into with gradient descent. One potential problem is that you could get stuck in what is called a local minimum. So let's just look at this example here. Let's say our initial guess for W is at this point. And we're going to do the gradient descent update step. So we're going to assign this W. We're going to give it a new value, which is the original value minus the learning rate times the derivative of the function with respect to W. And in this case, here, the derivative is going to take on a positive value. So we're going to have a positive value here. And that means that we're going to take a step in the negative direction. And the step size will be determined by uh, the learning rate. So we're going to move this way. And you can see that 
if you're going to step this way and maybe do it again, then at some point you're going to end up in this position here. But that's actually not the um, global minimum for this function. We want to end up here. So if you have a function with local minima um, like here and here and here, then the initial setting of your variable can be quite important because you will get stuck in one of these positions. Even if that's not the case, even if you have just a single global minimum, you can still run into problems with gradient descent. So this learning rate parameter here can be quite important. What happens if the learning rate eta is set to a value that's too small? Then maybe we could start in this position and we move down a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. And if eta is set too small, then you're just going to take a really, really, really long time to get to the minimum value here. The opposite can also happen. Let's see what happens if your learning rate is set to a value that's too big. Let's say we start here, which is actually relatively close to the minimum value that we want to get to. But we've set eta to a very large number. Then the gradient here is going to be negative. So we're going to move in the positive direction. And what we've done is eta is really big. So what we do is we end up jumping here. And now you're going to get a gradient here that's um, positive. So we're going to jump in a, a direction that's negative. We're going to jump this way. The gradient here is actually going to be slightly bigger than the gradient here. Here we had a relatively small negative gradient. Here we've got a slightly bigger positive gradient. So the jump we're going to make is actually going to be bigger and it's going to be in the positive direction. So we're going to go this uh, in the negative direction. So we're going to go that way. The same thing can happen there. So now you're going to jump out that way. And in the end, exactly the opposite thing is happening from what you want to happen uh, in the sense that we're jumping out of the pole instead of um, going down into the minimum. So choosing an appropriate learning rate is actually quite important in gradient descent. One thing to note with gradient descent, and I've almost mentioned this already, is that as you're getting closer to the minimum, your gradient is going to get smaller. The absolute value of your gradient is going to get smaller. So you're naturally going to take smaller steps. You might start out with a relatively big step, and then some smaller step, and so on. So you naturally have this kind of um, smoothing of the gradient as you get closer to the minimum. So up to this point we've been looking at gradient descent in one dimension so we just had the function being a function of one variable w but you can easily extend it to the multi-dimensional case. So let's say we've got d capital D variables then what you could do is you could update each of the uh, variables so w0 the new value for w0 will be the old value of w0 minus the learning rate times the partial derivative of the function with respect to w0. Same thing for w1, w1 minus learning rate partial derivative of the function with respect to w1 and so on up to wd. And of course again in a machine learning model this is quite useful because in general your loss will be a function of multiple variables, of multiple parameters, and you want to optimize all of those parameters. Now, if you have millions of parameters, then you're going to have like millions of equations here, which is not convenient. And as we've seen before is, it's often way more convenient to think of these things in terms of vectors or even matrices. So you could rewrite this whole set of equations in just one line by saying that the vector w is going to be assigned a new value, which is the old value minus the learning rate times the partial derivative of j with respect to the vector. And if you've watched the video on um, vector and matrix derivatives, then you will know exactly what this means. This is just all the partial derivatives for each of the individual parameters stacked into one vector. The cool thing is w here doesn't even need to just be a vector, it could even be a whole matrix that you're optimizing.
And in that case, this term here will also be a matrix and you're just assigning the values of all the elements in this matrix. You're going to update all of them together in just one line. And that's quite a powerful idea. It's used often to optimize many different types of models, including neural networks, where you could literally have millions of parameters. So gradient descent is very often used in practice. You, of course, need to gain a little bit of experience on how to, for example, set the learning rate. And I should also add that what I've described here is basically the basic um, gradient descent um, algorithm. There are way more advanced algorithms where, for example, um, just as one example, you would set the learning rate differently for each of the different parameters, because in some cases it might make sense to just have a different rate of update for the different parameters.